Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I do quite a lot of work on some parts of a Mayfad uh, ML7 lathe for a friend of mine. I'm machine a cross site to take a magnetic strip for a, a digital readout, and I do a little bit of work on the tail stock to also take a digital readout. I'll show quite a bit of that. It's nearly all milling machine work with some quite clever setups. Well, I think they're quite clever. Tonight is the first, or rather, today is the first of the month, so it's time for the monthly draw. There's only me here, so I'll have to do it. So we've got the bucket full of names. We'll have a good rummage around, get one out. Come on, John, just one. Right, one there. We'll have a look and see what it says. Right, the name I've got here is Bill Weighill, or Weighill, I'm not sure how you pronounce that one. Right Bill, all you need to do, send me an email with that address and I'll get that email posted off to you as soon as possible this week. I'm going to do another draw, uh, I've got some nice giveaway items, uh, my friend Bob's renovated one or two bits and pieces, they're going to be given away. If you haven't entered the draw, all you need to do is send me an email, that's me, email address up there, and all I need is your name, like your full name, like John Mills, not just John. Your name goes into the bucket, if it's drawn out, you win the prize. I've got people sending things in now just to be given away, um, it's pointless me keeping it all, I might as well. Spread a little bit of the, the wealth, I suppose. These are the prizes for this month's giveaway. This is a Imperial Dale Caliper. It was given to me and it was in, it worked, but it wasn't in very good condition. My friend Bob's taken it away, stripped it, put it back together, and it feels quite nice. One full turn is a hundred thou. I'm sure that'll make a, a useful addition to anybody's workshop. You also get a double boost cup. They're done by my friend Rob at Extreme Engineering or Extreme Plasma. And a set of these Cleveland drills. I use these myself in the workshop. They're very good. People think I get these given. I don't. I'm not sponsored by Cleveland drills. I want to buy the bastard things. At one time they were cheap but they're creeping up in price. Anyways, um, I don't mind spending a little bit of money to Give things away, they are a, a really good prize. Anyway, get your name in, you never know. That's the little film port where you put the oil at the lamp. I filled the lamp up, or at least I put some fuel in. I've used Coolman's stove fuel. So I'll shut that up now. It's been soaking for quite a while, so the fuel should have gone up the wick. So hopefully, if we remove the striker, it should light. Right, that's it, a light. The flink can be adjusted from the little wheel at the bottom. That's putting a surprise about the heat out. I bet there was some miners who were cold and wet would turn their lamps up and certainly warm their hands up on the on the top of there. I'm going to turn the light out in the garage and see what sort of illumination it produces. In pitch blackness that would put a lot of light out. I've done caving myself and I've used a carbide flame not much bigger than that and the light output is really good. Yeah, that's the light turned out in the garage. Obviously the camera will adjust to, to compensate to pull as much light as it can. But I think that that's quite a, a splendid little, little thing. This is a cross slide of an ML7 lathe belonging to a friend of mine and he's going to fit an MDRO digital readout to it. The readout for the cross slide is actually a magnetic tape that's hidden inside of here. The reed head goes onto there. So it's all neat, away from everything, out the road of coolant and oil. Uh, a really good solid setup. I have got a DRO made by MDRO on my milling machine, at least the, 
the readout head is. Right, it's got comes with some comprehensive instructions. It's fairly simple. The lad hasn't got a milling machine, so he can't machine the slot. He has marked the two holes that that bolt's onto, and I've checked them, and he's made a good job of them. They're uh, they're very accurate. So I'm going to mount this probably on an angle plate, drill and tap those two holes for six mil, and then we can get it clamped down and get the slot machined in there for the magnetic tape. Right, so I'm going to bolt the angle plate down and then clamp that onto there. One bolt through there, drill and tap those. It's belt and braces, it's got to be square, it's got to be straight. Might as well do the job properly. A couple of T-bolts to fit on there, which these made. Just do the job nicely. Very useful bit of kit, an angle plate. I've had this one a long time. Been modified and had different holes and slots drilled in it for various applications. But it has been a really useful bit of gear. I've also got one or two homemade ones. Right, you can run a clock along there to make sure that face is parallel but honestly the easiest way to do it with a degree of accuracy which is certainly good enough for this particular job is to simply put a square on there and push it up against the square. I've done this before and checked it with a clock and it really is an accurate way of doing things. See that, that face there? There's also been machined so you can check it on that face as well. It's absolutely blob on. Right, next thing. I'll get that mounted. And that's sitting square on the bed and held against there. It can't be anything else but straight. And then we can drill and tap those two holes. Right, like I said, can't be anything other than perfectly square and in line. It's absolutely spot on. You need to pick the two holes up. I didn't mark this off, but they certainly look good. Right, we're going to use the eyeball method. Line up one axis first. Then the other one. You can get extremely accurate doing this. People call it guessing, it certainly isn't guessing. I'm just going to mark these with a centre drill. Do one at a time. Nice sharp 5mm drill. Cast iron is nice and soft, it should drill quite nicely. I'm just going to set a zero on the Quill. And we'll measure down how far we can drill because we don't want to break into the large T slots. Right, we've got 18 mil, 18 and a half, so we can go down 15 mil safely.
Right, that's 15 mil. A nice new top here. Grip it tight in the choke, but not it's not tightly there, it would actually snap the top of it or it's a jam just enough to sort of get a real good grip of it. Right, so if I zero again, I know I can go down 15 mil. I'll finish this off by hand with a, a plug tap. And if I check on the drone and see what distance they are apart, I'll be able to measure it using my DRO. Let's see how near he's got it. So we know what zeroed on that hole there. I'll just check his drone. Right, we're looking for 46 mil. Here's you with that. Right, that is 46 mil there. And he's got it pretty accurate. In fact, he's got it very accurate. Right, so we'll settle for that. If you didn't have a milling machine or a drill press, I've got a little jig there you could clamp that on, and that's the 5mm hole, so you could drill that through the 5mm, and that one there's a clearance for a 5mm, 6mm tap, so you could actually use a block like that, just clamped on and do it with a cordless drill if you had to. I'm going to run a plug tap down by hand just to finish these off. Right, and it's favourite tool time. My dad's hand drill, just to gently derag them. Right, the reed head screws onto there with the, their logo up towards the, the top. Important it's level with the top face, so I'm just going to tighten it down on the bed of my mill machine, which is reasonably flat, I would imagine. Right, so that's sitting nice and flat. If 
feels good. Right, the next thing to do is to clamp that down, make sure it's nice and in line with the bed, and then mill a slot down there. Probably put a 20 or a 25 mil cutter down first, just to make sure it's all flat. And then there's a 10 mil slot goes down there to take the tape for the reed head 